All right, so there's a lot of news this week. Um, Scalar, they've got a new update coming out, another free update, and that'll be uh, dropped on the May 26th. So that'll be Scalar 2, 2.4, and um, has a lot of cool things in there. Be sure to check out David's new video. He's put out a video where he goes into detail explaining some of the new things. A um, couple of the interesting parts were that um, they're going to have some new uh, chord progressions, types, and um, he went into detail about how useful uh, the modulation, and they kind of uh, focused on the modulation tools and how you can modulate from, say, if you've got a chord progression in a certain key and you want to modulate for the chorus or the bridge or uh, the verse, you want to change it into another key. So you like your chord progression, but you just want the verses to be in a different key and how you can use these modulation tools to do exactly that. So you could have your chord progression and have a pathway. It'll show you some uh, uh, transition chords to get you into your new key. So very handy for, you know, keeping your songs from being all in the same key. Also, he talked about how you can uh, borrow or steal interesting chords from another key and bring them into your chord progression. So if you're in uh, A minor, and uh, you have you know six chords in your chord progression but there's usually one weak chord in there somewhere which you either want to edit and and you can edit these chords you can just go in there and you could edit the notes and velocity very easily but what if you wanted a whole different chord in another key so you want to add some nice flavor in there and so instead of having one of your chords as a weak chord it can now be the strong and a strong chord and bring a lot of flavor into your progression. So he describes in detail um, how you can use uh, the modulation tools to get uh, to do that also. And um, so all in all it sounds like a very promising update uh, coming along. So that's on the 26th. Uh, Remedy has decided to give everybody their free full jazz pack um, so look for that on um, Plugin Boutique. It should be up shortly. I talked to them, I think, a day or two ago. I let them uh, ask the question on their YouTube. So they said it should be up on uh, Plugin Boutique uh, pretty quick. So be sure to upgrade your Remedy to, uh, I think it's at 2.03, so they get that free jazz pack. And uh, so yeah, so some great news uh, from our favorite softwares. Now I've been doing a lot of experimenting and uh, looking at what makes VSTs really playable. Um, this Taylor, uh, Ample Taylor acoustic guitar is just a really great example of uh, how we can do that. So in the next segment we're going to look at uh, some interesting things I found with Scalar and uh, how to make um, your VSTs more playable so you're doing more playing and less fiddling with um, you know key switches and whatnot. So I also forgot to mention about uh, the polls so uh, when you get a thousand subscribers YouTube gives you some new tools to try to uh, make the experience better for your audience and one of those tools is under the community tab there's uh, I can now have polls so I can ask you guys questions and get your opinions of what you want to see and so I already have three polls up there so uh, you know be sure to take the time fill them out and um, so that I can get a clear picture of what you guys want to see on the channel so all right today um, We've, we're talking about VSTs and how to, you know, what are, first of all, what are some of the best VSTs that are playable? Not so much programmable, but they just play beautifully so that you can get right into the music and just record into Cubase and start moving along. And, um, you know, what are the things that make a VST uh, playable? So we're going to look at that and a couple of things I discovered uh, in my experiments with uh, Scalar as I was uh, working with the Ample Taylor guitar and Scalar. So 
First of all, um, the Taylor guitar right out of the box um, is very playable. So if you just go to your keyboard and just really playable um, just you know enjoyable to play sounds very realistic and a, a few of the things that you can do to enhance that um, and really quick is something I missed before and I never even realized if these four buttons here so these are the uh, different types of legato so you have legatos that are turned off so well there's basically three type uh, three modes automatic slide, automatic hammer-ons, and pull off. And uh, so these three modes, if you uh, right-click on that button here, you can have note velocity or any of the controllers or CC data, your expression pedal, your mod wheel, whatever, breath controller, um, can control that. So I'm going to turn note on velocity to step me through um, three different types of legato on the fly as I play and they're all bring something interesting if you hit uh, softly so if you play softly and you can see a step through and very quietly it turns first mode second mode and third mode and so as you play, without even worrying about any key switching going on, um, it's going to step through the different types of legato. And uh, at the stage where you're just creating music and want to play and stay in the zone, um, I don't care about all the little details. I just want an instrument that uh, gives me enough feedback and interest and sounds good enough so that I can play and be musical and come up with ideas, chord progressions, some melodies. So that's the first thing. Then you can also, all of these buttons are the same way. So if I right click and say, okay, well, turn velocity to add some noise, stroke noise, uh, same thing. Or you could have this to a different controller to just bring in stroke noise when you hit really, you know, uh, harshly on the keys. And same thing with open strings. You can have that turn on and off as you're, you're playing. So um, it's just another thing that you can give some variance as uh, um, as you play automatically. And then you can adjust these different effects and different uh, modes that you play in and uh, the capo, you can you could have this same thing. The capo or capo can be adjusted and I can't do it while this is open, but you can use any of the CC data and mod wheels or anything to adjust that automatically. You could you could put the capo on your your pedal as you're playing, you know. So this can be moving up and down or change position as you go to the verse or chorus, and you can have that on any controller slider or wheel or whatever. So that's another thing that you can set up. So what you know, if you take the time to set up things like this and set up your sustain pedal, um, you can play with a lot of interest uh, without touching, you know, while having both uh, hands on the keyboard and just playing. So So while I was doing some experiments with that, and uh, I think I would have this not turned on, 
on velocity in that case, but it is available if you want to use open strings in certain cases in that. So as I was experimenting with the scaler and the Apple guitar and riffer, I noticed that um, with all the different performances that you have in scaler, if we listen to, like, it all depends, and I've said this before, but it depends what beats per, you know, on your chord duration, how many beats of that performance is going to play. And I, I really discovered that um, if you play it using, we'll use the guitar to play it, and I've got an interesting little chord progression from uh, Song Styles, uh, I believe it was alternate, Alternative 1, I think it was. And if we just play it the normal way, and we've all heard this, if I turn on performance, so we've all heard that, it's number one on there, so I'm sure everybody's heard that, you know, many times. Um, but we get that really melodic uh, performance there. But it, if you do go to the uh, beats and just turn it down to two beats or one beat, you get a whole different feel, a more uh, rhythmic feel to it. So same thing, just two beats per chord. So it's a lot more rhythmic and it's a very interesting. You know, it's a new musical style just because you've you're only uh, got it on two beats but it's still it's a new musical uh, look at the uh, the first accento performance here and if you go and you know switch it to one beat uh, it's still musical and interesting but different <laughs> you get a whole different flavor to um, these performances if you go through them you'll find some real gems where um, you know when you have it at one beat or two beats uh, some of them are not set up for one or two beats but uh, a lot of them are and uh, you get a whole different rhythmic feel and usage out of uh, those uh, performances so be sure to give that a try So yeah, the more um, automatic things you can have um, changing the tone and playability of your guitar as you're playing live, the better. And uh, also all these sliders, pretty much any of these buttons can be put on a controller. Even the microphone, uh, the microphones, you know, you could uh, change the volume on the microphones a little bit. The uh, capo can also be put on a mod wheel or some kind of controller and all of these sliders, your pick noise and all of that. So be sure to set up your uh, instrument to be as playable as possible. And uh, once you do that, it just set up a scaler. And in this case, I have a key lock to uh, F major scale. I have my keyboard set up and uh, just playing that into Cubase in the key of F it allows me to just concentrate on my playing unless on the technical side So in the next segment, we're going to look at another instrument, uh, violins and a, like a quartet section, and how you can set that up also to play more naturally and uh, to make it so playable that you're really concentrating uh, on what you're creating on the keyboard, opposed to worrying about key switches and uh, whatnot. 
And uh, in this case with the guitar, af after playing in the um, this little sequence here, I just changed a few of the velocities quickly and I've changed around a few of the notes. I uh, set up my core track so the, to keep me in the kind of ballpark where I should be. But I've uh, added and changed a few notes, added a little bit of melodic uh, variance and movement up in here and a few notes here and there and um, kind of you know just made some of the notes a uh, little quantized just one at a time but uh, after just a few minutes of editing you can come up with something that's uh, you, you know you can it's playable so in the next segment we're going to look at the violins and that quartet and how we can also make that playable and uh, get some recordings into Cubase quickly so in this segment, we've got a more complex setup and uh, with a uh, section of solo strings. So we're talking violin, cellos, um, viola, double bass, and a selection of different um, VSTs, each one bringing different flavors. So each one of these uh, channels here, these tracks, is a different solo violin. And they all have, they're set up for a different flavor, a different articulation. So this cello on this track, track two, cello two, is a flotando, which is a very light and airy, wispy type of uh, cello playing. Um, for violin one, um, let's see, where's violin one? We've got more of a stronger bow, so a, a slow and passionate stronger bow. And um, on violin two, we've got a progressive uh, vibrato, but a shorter articulation. And um, same thing with the, the others. Uh, each one brings a different flavor and a different type of articulation. So on the viola, it's a, a saltasto. Uh, legato, so it's playing like a legato line, connected uh, notes. And so when you set it up this way that every track brings some flavor and a different articulation, and if it's done correctly, you end up with a very playable instrument. Um, but that's not where that idea ends. But. So without hitting any any key switches at all, just playing live on the keyboard. It's just a very fluid and enjoyable thing to play. And um, of course this is a more complex uh, setup. We've we do have our scaler as uh, usual that's helping us to uh, stay in the key of uh, D minor scale. And that's connected, that's the input to a loopback track, which is running all of these tracks. So this is more complex and it would take a long video just to get into how to set this up, even though if you watched my videos before, you could probably figure this out uh, pretty quickly. It's not really that complex, but it's more involved than just opening up Ample Taylor guitar, um, setting up some controller uh, data lanes, and just starting to play. But what it gives you when you go through all that trouble, and I might as well explain another part of it here, is with the uh, Divisi, DivisiMate. Um, I've done videos on DivisiMate before, and uh, what is so useful is if you're going to play live, if you want to create very playable live instruments that aren't going to be made for just you know tracking one couple notes at a time and doing MIDI data moves, but if you if you actually want to play it live on your keyboard and enjoy it, uh, Divisimate is really great because it allows you to have all these different tracks of instruments, but it allows only one key. So let's just go back to here. So my violin track, instead of when I'm playing chords on my keyboard, instead of every three notes of that chord being spammed in onto the keyboard and playing um, samples, 
Divisimate says, I can set up Divisimate to say that, no, I just, I want the, the violins, they're higher instruments, I just want them to play the first high notes. I want the, the uh, viola to come in and maybe just play in the, the mid notes and uh, the double bass to play on the lower notes and only certain, uh, maybe one note of the chord on each will be played at a time. So it, when you play Divisi style, you don't have that big uh, mash of MIDI notes going through and coming out as um, a very kind of muddy setup. You get a, a much more clear defined sound and that can be played live as all these tracks have input so I play live on the keyboard, which goes uh, into Scalar. Scalar goes to the loopback track, which drives all of my uh, string sections here, my solo strings. So it's just a matter of setting up things. And uh, again, it's all, it's all about setting up your instruments to be very playable. And uh, why that's so valuable to me is, is that I can just, once it's all set up, I save my Cubase project and I never have to do the setup again. Um, I make sure there's no conflicts with, um, uh, you know, I set up all of my tracks, each instrument is set up that there's no key switch uh, channels that may conflict and be hit by other notes and, you know, automatically switching my, how many times have you played an instrument and because one of the MIDI notes has triggered a wrong uh, key switch, then you switch automatically to some articulation you don't want. So I make sure that all my instruments have all their key switches controlled, either out of the way or turned off. And I turn, I you know, I create every instrument the way I like it. So I may turn on humanizing. I may, if I'm using Divisi, usually I turn humanizing off for uh, VSL instruments because there can be a phasing issue. It took me a long time to figure out what was happening. Um, if you have multiple Synchron players open, and they all have humanized tuning, you can get some phasing issues. But if you turn it down or off, you get rid of that phasing completely. So just little things like that you learn. Uh, getting, like I said, the key switches out of the way, making sure that each instrument plays the articulation you want, in the range you want, and at the volume. And another thing, I set up all my instruments to be played live uh, with a key on my paddle or pedal. So the expression is all set up on all my instruments on my pedal. So if I just go to the keyboard again and play something, I can bring in So you have control of all the instrument as one on the pedal. So really expressive. It, it allows you to concentrate both hands on the keyboard, one foot on the pedal, and um, so that you can play more expressive uh, lines. And as you play, um, you'll notice some portamento, some uh, different legatos coming and going. As also, um, all of these instruments, you can set up some of them that they change. So in this case, uh, Dimension A is changing the type of vibrato, vibrato the double basses are going to play, right? So the sustains are changing from progressive to a decreasing vibrato. And so when you have so many instruments all set up with different articulations and some of them that change on the fly according to your velocity pressure or whatever, um, you end up with a very expressive uh, instrument played uh, with a foot pedal. And you can play it live into Cubase and come up with something really enjoyable and then which allows you to edit that later really quickly.
may want to make the odd edits to the expression uh, data down here or to the velocities. Change a few notes around. Make sure your chord track is switched on and you have uh, to D or whatever key you're in. It becomes a lot more enjoyable experience to create music. See that portamento slide there was automatic. Um, it wasn't something I had to program in with a key switch at all. It just happens naturally. So you, there's less concern about the instrument. And then later, you know, while you're playing, you're getting your idea down quicker. And there's a lot less editing that has to occur later. So you can capture your idea, but you're not, um, you know, that doesn't um, hinder your editing process because this channel, then I go back to the start and I turn all of my uh, channels to record. And when they're all set to record, um, I just play back the loopback channel and that will record all the MIDI data onto every separate track. And so I'll have my violin MIDI data just on the violin track so I can, so later I can go in and fine tune and edit every detail. I can also go in and, you know, make, uh, put in key switches later, or whatever. But, um, you know, if you do set up your instruments to play live better, your editing process down the line is going to be way quicker. And uh, like I mentioned, there were some portamento slides in here that just happened naturally because of how I've got uh, some of these instruments set up. Um, you know, uh, the amount of portamento comes in at certain velocities. And um, so it does take a while. I, it took me two or three days where I was just experimenting, starting to get a really um, nice sounding, clear sounding, um, you know, by a string, solo string section, and uh, was able to control uh, just through automation how it, you know, handled uh, my playing. And so there, there wasn't too much portamento. I could turn down the sliders for the portamento. Um, I could, uh, you know, you can control where your bow change velocities occur. And um, so what you end up with, is a very playable instrument and that you can come up with a bunch of different chord progressions really enjoyable and uh, so that's what I uh, like to do most uh, nowadays. Instead of fighting the instruments, taking the time to get to know them really well once, um, then take a day or two to set them up, uh, save it all out in a uh, Cubase project, and I even title them accordingly. So playable uh, solo violins, you know, will be one project file. Uh, playable cello and double bass uh, solos, uh, full section, you know, and also I'll name the Divisi uh, presets the same way. So th in this case, uh, this idea started with Setup 21. So I know that Setup 21 is the Divisi preset that I've created to make sure that all these instruments play only the notes that I want where I want them. So there is work involved. But uh, I'll tell you, once you have it set up, it is so enjoyable and so qu much quicker to get musical ideas into your DAW and later separate them out for the fine tuning and editing on every track. So that's today's video. Uh, just wanted to mention a few things about the Scalar update, free update, the uh, Remedy free update. Uh, the polls now available on the website. Uh, please take part so I know what you guys want to see more of. 
And um, yeah, we'll catch you on the next video.